everyone. Hey guys, welcome to Obscure MCU. In this episode, I'll be covering one of the various arc reactors in the Infinity Saga. This is the arc reactor Mark I. During the Ten Rings attack and capture of Tony Stark, shrapnel from a nearby explosion embedded itself dangerously close to his heart. A fellow captive named Dr. Yinsen managed to remove most of the shrapnel, but couldn't extract the pieces closest to Tony's heart. To prevent the shrapnel from reaching his heart and killing him, Yinsen devised an improvised solution using a powerful electromagnet powered by a car battery. This setup kept Tony alive, but it was clear that the car battery was only a temporary fix. Realizing that the car battery wouldn't keep him alive for long, Tony drew inspiration from the large arc reactor that powered his factory back in the United States. With the help of Yinsen, Tony miniaturized the design into a small portable device that could fit in his hand and be embedded directly into his chest. At its heart, the Mark I of the arc reactor features a unique toroidal design, which is essentially a donut-shaped structure that allows for efficient energy circulation. The central core of the reactor appears to be made of a highly conductive material, a palladium alloy, which was chosen for its ability to handle extreme electrical loads and its resistance to corrosion. A critical factor given the art reactor's continuous operation inside Tony's chest. Surrounding the central core are tightly wound coils of copper wire, an excellent conductor of electricity. These coils are critical to the reactor's function. When electricity flows through these coils, they generate a powerful electromagnetic field, which is essential for the reactor's operation. The copper windings are likely insulated with a high-temperature, durable polymer to prevent short-circuiting and to protect the delicate wiring from the heat generated during operation. The Mark I arc reactor doesn't just generate electricity, it converts the potential energy stored in the palladium core into a stable and continuous power output. This discharge is controlled and channeled through the copper coils, converting raw energy into usable electrical power. The casing of the arc reactor, likely made from a high-strength alloy such as titanium or a similar durable metal available to Tony while held captive. The casing also serves a dual purpose. It not only contains the energy generated within the reactor, preventing leakage that could be harmful or wasteful, but it also provides structural integrity to protect the delicate inner components from physical shocks and vibrations, especially considering the reactor's placement in Tony's chest. In terms of power output, the Mark I arc reactor generates sufficient energy to sustain Tony's life by powering the electromagnet that keeps shrapnel from reaching his heart. Beyond that, it produces enough surplus energy to power the first Iron Man suit, a feat that involves running servos, control systems, weapons, and even flight systems. Despite its groundbreaking design, the Mark I arc reactor was ultimately a prototype that provided Tony with just enough power to escape. But it wasn't designed for long-term use. After his escape and subsequent rescue by the military, Tony returned to his lab and quickly began work on an upgraded version of the arc reactor. The Mark I was ultimately replaced by the Mark II, made from higher quality materials and more advanced technology. He told Pepper to get rid of it, but she gifted it to Tony as a gift and even saved his life once again when Obadiah Stain stole the Mark II. And many years later, after Tony's death, the Mark I would be used during his funeral. What's your favorite aspect of the first arc reactor? Let me know in the comments and please like and subscribe for more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching.